So I've been checking out those Tears of the Kingdom leaks and it turns out that Zelda was a Cylon the whole time. No. Yeah, yeah, fucking wild. Uh, what else was there? Oh yeah, Link shot Dirty Den. That was a huge twist. Uh, never saw that one coming. And uh, yeah, Zelda friend Roger Rabbit. So utterly shocking. Oh, 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 hello there, didn't see you and other such contrivances. I'm James Stephanie Sterling, here to talk, well, about some Nintendo stuff and some Kotaku stuff, and I'm really sticking my fucking neck out on this one, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post the video, then leg it, run away. Don't find me, don't look for me. You don't know this NB, you don't know them. Even though I'm going to bat for something everyone hates, I'm right. I'm going to take my mentor force and go home. You are at home. Oh yeah, brilliant. I'm Put it back then. It is always morally okay to pirate Nintendo's games. Of my many catchphrases, that one is easily my most correct, righteous, and in dire need of a t-shirt design. Only recently, we talked about Nintendo employing terror tactics to frighten would-be illegal downloaders, because that's easier than fixing the huge piracy problem the company has. Oh, and it is huge. The original model of the Nintendo Switch has a massive vulnerability that can be exploited to effectively make piracy a doddle. The issue is fixed in later models, but that's shutting the stable door after the horse has put on a tricorn hat and sailed the seven seas. <laughs> They can't just stop releasing games for one version of the Switch. That would be an absurd screw job inflicted on people who bought it, possibly an actionable one. No, until Nintendo releases a new console entirely, it has to suck it up. Mm. The result of this is that literally every single big Nintendo game released over the past few years has leaked weeks before launch. All the Pokemons, Metroid Dread, the utter lot of it, easily accessible ahead of time. You could fill a Steam Deck with them if you wanted, and it'd be morally okay to do that. Unsurprisingly, the frothingly anticipated sequel to the 7 out of 10 classic Breath of the Wild, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, lies at the current source of Nintendo's tears, having been both pirated and physically leaked with copies being sold over a week before its May 12th release date. LOL! And may I also add, LMAO. Now, while it's alluring to provide another episode in which I smugly make fun of Nintendo's foibles and unsubtly troll Zelda fans for their never-ending tantrum over the fact I thought Breath of the Wild was good instead of perfect, this particular leak has given me something else to talk about, and it involves that bastion of journalistic chicanery and game of tears, Kotaku. Ah, Kotaku. Perhaps the most inoffensive publication to ever offend so many nerds. The gaming press outlet drew fire this week for reporting on Tears of the Kingdom in a, let's say, defiant way. Yeah, let's go with defiant. With an article written by Ethan Gatch titled, Everything We're Learning About Zelda Tears of the Kingdom From The Leaks. This article does pretty much what it says on the tin. It details, well, everything we're learning about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom from the leaks. This obviously means it's sharing a lot of information that should be privileged, dishing the long long milk on things we're not yet supposed to know. As a press outlet, it's revealing a try fuckload of stuff that's under tight press embargo. Or it would be if Kotaku were under embargo, but they're not. Nintendo blacklisted Kotaku a long time ago. It doesn't send them review copies. It doesn't give them PR access. There was a Tears of the Kingdom preview event recently and they weren't invited. While all the well-behaved journalists play ball and keep their plump little lips welded shut, Kotaku is under no obligation whatsoever to appease, please, or otherwise abet Nintendo in its secrecy. And you gotta remember one thing before we continue. It's always morally okay to publish everything we're learning about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom from the leaks. Nevertheless, how dare Kotaku, how very dare those scurrilous charlatans, those duplicitous recidivists, those 
bunk flakes. How could Kotaku bully the poor defenseless multi-billion dollar corporation that likes to bully people to break an agreement that they never agreed to, to betray a trust that was never there, to go back on a word it never gave? The treachery goes beyond the chart and reaches distances beyond our mortal ken. I will... So goes much of the sentiment in the wake of this. The silly belief, and it is fucking silly, that Kotaku was in the wrong for not playing ball when it wasn't part of the game. For wrecking lives by... Uh... Writing about some things that are in a video game. Oh, and people really do think Kotaku did a terrible thing by publishing information in an article that nobody had to read. This isn't one of those things where I cherry pick a few outlier comments for the excuse to make fun of them. A vast chunk of the community is furious. YouTube is full of reaction videos with hilariously melodramatic titles that I'm not gonna watch because when I want to self-harm I go with way less horrific options. My god though, the hysterics on display. Kotaku leaks! 13 gameplay features in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Kotaku self-implodes with the Nintendo Zelda leaks. Kotaku embarrasses themselves over Tears of the Kingdom. Kotaku tries to ruin Tears of the Kingdom. RUIN! All caps mind! God, if a video game could be ruined by a Kotaku article, that would have to be one shitty game to begin with. Then of course we have the blasted shitscape of social media and the takes of Pearl Clutching Gamers TM, as well as the forever precious eggshell princes that are Zelda fans. To say they've gone off the deep end is to undersell how subterranean an end they've gone off. Kotaku proves on a daily basis that they have zero integrity! I see you guys are really trying your hardest to make the whole world hate you! Bankruptcy on the horizon for Kotaku. What a bunch of unprofessional journalists you guys are! I hope you go out of business as you are scum! Fuck you, Kotaku! I hope you get blacklisted from the entire industry for being this unprofessional. A very pathetic display, honestly. And the cloaca of journalism! <laughs> <laughs> At Nintendo, I would like to report a copyright violation! Kotaku. Wow. You all got some big, big feelings, huh? All to protect a company that would set all y'all's houses on fire if it made them Yahoo! money. As the meme goes, Damn, son, you were only supposed to lick the boot, not make an entire meal out of it. Among the hilariously overblown bitching are a few common, very fucking common, arguments. The first being that Kotaku's post showed a lack of journalistic integrity. That term is kicked about like a hacky sack when people whine about games journalists, but it seems to be terminally misunderstood. Like... What integrity would Kotaku exhibit by not writing that post? It owes Nintendo nothing. It has no agreement to honour. Nintendo blacklisted them, they've nothing to lose and absolutely zero obligation to the company that had a man sent to prison over video game piracy even though prison was a health risk to him. Sure, what Kotaku did could be called petty, but journalists publish information. Good journalists often publish information that those in power don't want published. The press reports on rumours and shares juicy gameplay gossip all the time. Journalists the world over, in any field, use leaks and privileged information to write their stories. And they often do that over important shit that actually matters, not a fucking computer game. To risk retaliation when it'll piss off those at the top and risk retaliation. To stick by your journalism even when being harassed and threatened over it. All with the caveat, of course, that the information does no individual harm. I don't know. You may not like what Kotaku did, you might think it's wrong, hell, you might say it's unprofessional based on the potential motive, but a lack of integrity? Nah. I don't think so. Another common complaint is that Kotaku posted spoilers, and as much as people think that they have a true moral high ground there, it's the easiest one to answer. The short answer is, 
No, they didn't. It's an article you don't have to read, with a headline that tells you what it is up front, and a lengthy warning that it's full of spoilers before it gets to the actual content. If Kotaku spoiled you, no, it didn't. You spoiled yourself by reading. I know this for a fact, because I'm in the middle of reporting on the situation as I speak. I mean, it's what I'm speaking, and I don't know a damn thing Kotaku revealed. I've been able to easily avoid those leaked details despite writing and editing this very video all about said leaked details. If you don't want Kotaku to ruin your game for you, stop. Fucking reading it! I mean, the people maddest at Kotaku don't even read Kotaku, they fucking hate the site. Then we get to the most repeated argument of all, the argument that Nintendo's blacklisting of Kotaku was justified and Kotaku will never get back into the company's good graces now. And my initial reaction to that one is... <laughs> who fucking cares? Frankly, being blacklisted by any major game publisher is a badge of honour because they're all cunts and if you piss them off, you probably did a good thing. I boast about being blacklisted by Konami. I revel in EA thinking I'm too risky to send review copies to, and I am beyond pleased with myself that I systematically burned almost every bridge I had in the corrupt, broken, hateful little game industry. Fuck the lot of it. And where the hell do people get off whining about journalistic integrity while smugly pontificating that Kotaku should bow and scrape to a corporate master. When they're demanding journalists to go out of their way to please and appease a company it is in no way beholden to. Come the fuck on. Either you want journalists to have integrity, or you want them to gobble corporate cock. You can't have both. More to the point, what Kotaku did here was actually demonstrate the outright benefit of being blacklisted by, and therefore free of, Nintendo and its restrictions. Right now, Kotaku is the only outlet among established press that can publish these red-hot details, while all the other good little journos are under the thumb of embargo, kept in line by the threat of losing their precious access, Kotaku can actually do what journalism does and share relevant information. If you're not playing the game, the rules don't apply to you. And in this situation, it's what gave Kotaku the advantage. Blacklists aren't a restriction. They are fucking freedom. You can argue that it bites them in the ass when it comes to review copies, but pfft. The advantage of publishing a review at the same time all the other publications do it is negligible at best. As someone who doesn't request review copies anymore and typically posts their reviews a week after launch, I've not really felt a difference from my pre-bridge burning days when I used to be able to publish as soon as embargo lifts. In fact, my old Breath of the Wild review is proof positive that you can get plenty of eyes on your work with a post-launch review, whether you fucking want that attention or not. Nah, review code ain't that important. Press access is only ever temporarily beneficial. Being able to write a preview matters until the game is out. Getting a review up at embargo matters until the best reviewer in the world, me, posts the final and only word anybody ever needs. The ability to say whatever you want when you've got nothing left for those with the gags to take away? That's timeless. The ultimate question is this. Do you want actual game journalism, or do you want an extension of the PR department? From the beginning, game publishers have viewed the press as the latter. They're a means of promotion, of getting publicity for a game in a manner tightly controlled by marketing managers who use access and perks to keep the journos playing bowl. The vast majority of games press outlets don't represent independent journalism. They're in a symbiotic relationship with publishers in which they get flown to preview events, granted early copies of games, and given free shit in exchange for obeying the rules and publicising a company's games in the manner that company wants them publicised. And that's fine. It's video games. It's enthusiast press. It doesn't really matter, and for the most part, it's a relationship that works out harmlessly. But it also comes with a huge sense of entitlement. Like when good old Randy Pitchford, Randy Bo Bandy, started crying at Eurogamer over revealing Borderlands details before Game Informer's big exclusive. He called it shoddy journalism. The mere publishing of information that readers wanted to read, that is apparently shoddy journalism. The fact Gearbox had worked out a big reveal with Game Informer wasn't Eurogamer's fucking problem. Just like with Kotaku here, Eurogamer didn't know them shit. But Pitchford felt owned. 
because it's expected that games press are so bound by the duties of an unofficial PR department that they'll honour agreements they didn't even make at their own cost. And fuck that. Fuck being that spineless. And fuck the attitude that you should play nice with a game publisher just because it's expected. I don't expect publishers to be anything but dickheaded dickheads with the heads of dicks. Forgive me if I don't cry a river that someone else dicked them over. Manta Force, searching the universe for Earth's twin planet, an entire space battle force in one gigantic ship. Manta Force, from Bluebird. This one's stuck. I got the little robot man. That's all that matters. Look, it's got a little bloke in it. Just little blokes. Manta Force! Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, that was today's video. Uh, fun. I meant what I said, by the way. Uh, Kotaku is so inoffensive. It's actually ridiculous the power that is ascribed to that website when it it's just another video game blog, ultimately. Um, many people in the hardcore gamer TM community uh, have this real problem with creating their own monsters, fulfilling their own prophecies as twere. Uh, we saw this with Anita Sarkeesian as well. Um, they obsess so much over their perceived enemies that they create a sort of twisted idol out of them. It's wild. Kotaku, in the grand scheme of things, isn't all that important. And I don't mean that as an insult, really. I'm not all that important. Uh, I'm less so every day. Um, but it got to the point where Activision CEO and twat Bobby Kotick uh, was allegedly looking into ways of buying Kotaku to stop bad press about Activision. Which is absurd! They're not worth that much fuss! <sighs> it's got a little space helicopter, so thank God for that. And my hand fell out. Thank God for that, and thank God for me. Oh. Stephanie, why? Good girl. Mantopos! In the fight against Major Vex and his Viper Squad, Manta Force have built the Battle Fortress. But Major Vex is determined to stop Manta Force finding Earth's twin planet. He aims to destroy their Battle Fortress. But Manta Force won't give in that easily. The Manta Force Battle Fortress from Bloomer!